Hey guys, so I got a question on trying to figure out how many x-intercepts a quadratic has. So I've kind of done a video sort of about this, but I thought I'd make one that's a little bit more explicit. So this is just straight up examples. Whereas um, I kind of broke down how to do this in, in a previous video that I'll include a link to um, in the description of this video. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different quadratics. And just to make sure that we really understand them, we're going to go ahead and we're going to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and we're also going to graph the function. Um, so the hardest part of this will be kind of be the x-intercepts, and this is really what I'm focusing on is trying to make sure that we get a good breadth of examples for this so that you understand this. But, you know, while the hood's open, why don't we just do some of these other things? Now, just something I want to point out that I've, I've heard is kind of a an issue I think some people are having when they do this. So. Remember that even though you're being asked to do all of this, you don't have to necessarily do all of this in this order. So if you find it maybe easier to figure some of this out by graphing the function, that's always an option, right? You can go ahead and graph the function first, and then you can kind of figure out some of this other stuff. So don't feel like you have to go in order. And in fact, for this example, we're not gonna go in order. Now, here are the four examples I'm gonna go through in this video. So if there's a particular one that you wanna see, you can of course fast forward to it. But what, the, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you an example where there are two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, and then no x-intercepts. And how can you figure that out and how can you do that? Okay, so let's jump into the first one. So I'm going to go slightly out of order from that list I showed you of things we want to get done. So I can pretty easily pick out the vertex and the axis of symmetry from this equation. And then calculating the y-intercept won't take too much work. So we're just going to do that while, while we're here. So I've got one half times x plus 1 squared minus 8. So the vertex here, the vertex here is negative 1, negative 8. And then the axis of symmetry is going to be the equation x equals negative 1. Now a really common thing I'm hearing um, as some of you guys are working through this is that you're, you're, you're getting marked wrong on the homework system for the axis of symmetry. And that's probably because you don't have the x. So the axis of symmetry has to be an equation. It's not just a number, it's an equation x equals negative 1. Now, to find the y-intercept, all you have to do is plug 0 into the equation. So what that means is I have to take f of 0, and I basically just follow the order of operations from here. So I will do all of this. And so then first I do the inside the parentheses. And then I will square the 1. So this will be 1 half times 1 squared. So this is really just 1 half minus 8. Now, to make this um, more approachable, I will rewrite this 8. So I will multiply the 8 by 2 over 2 so that this actually becomes 1 half minus 16 over 2 so that I get negative 15 over 2 for my y-intercept. So just to make this nice and clear, my y-intercept will be the point 0, negative 15 over 2. Now, for y-intercepts, there's only ever going to be one y-intercept. So it's not like you have to worry about is there one, two, or zero. There will always be one, okay? Now, let's go to the part about x-intercepts. And you're going to kind of see the consistency in this process now. So to find your x-intercepts, you always set your function. You set it equal to zero. And in this case, so it, it kind of depends on how your quadratic is set up, but if your quadratic is in, say, this form, then you want to use the square root property to figure this out. So basically then, and this is something I've talked about in another video, you want to isolate this piece here. So to do that, first I'm going to bring the 8 over, so I get 1 half times x plus 1 squared equals 8. And then I need to get rid of this fraction, so I'll go ahead and multiply both sides by 2. And so I get x plus 1 squared equals 16. So remember, the whole goal here was to isolate the thing that's being squared so that we can use the square root property. So now I can go ahead and take the square root of each side. So if I take the square root of each side, remember, this side will be plus or minus. So now I have x plus 1 equals plus or minus 4. So now I just have to break out these two cases. Now, before I go any farther, just notice what this is telling you. This is already telling you that there are two x-intercepts, right? They like because you have a plus or minus, you're breaking this into two cases, so you have you have two x-intercepts. So I have to solve this for when this equals positive four, 
And so I can do that just by subtracting the ones. So my first x-intercept is at x equals three. And then if I do this again, I have to also solve this for when this equals negative four. Subtract the one, I get x equals negative five. So I have three zero and negative five zero. Those are my two x-intercepts in this case. And then I can also confirm that by drawing this. So if I draw this out, so let's see, if I go to one and then down here to negative eight, I go out one and up one half in each direction. So here's my graph. So just look at what happens with the actual graph. So I might not have these, these perfectly spot on, so my, my scaling's a little bit off because I drew this by hand. Um, but just logically, when you look at the number of x-intercepts, there are one, two. So if you're ever unsure of how many x-intercepts there are, so whatever answer you get here should also make sense on the graph. I can see there are two x-intercepts, so that logically makes sense. Okay, so let's keep going with this. So now let's go to the next example. Okay, so in this case, notice that I have nothing being added on the outside. Sometimes this throws people off. So you could just think of this as there's like an invisible plus zero here. Therefore, my vertex will be three zero and my axis of symmetry will be x equals three. Don't forget the x. And then to find my y-intercept, so once again, so I'm just gonna plug in zero. And you might wanna actually pause the video and just figure this out on your own and then hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So I'm getting that this is negative two times nine. So this comes out to negative, oops, 18, not eight. So my y-intercept, so just to be nice and explicit, it's the point zero, negative 18. Okay, so now let's work on the x-intercept. So we're gonna do the same thing again, but now that we're gonna have, this is gonna be different from the last one, all right? So this, I'm gonna set equal to zero. It's still the same goal, okay? So I still just wanna isolate this part here. So to do that, I need to divide both sides by negative two so that I can isolate that thing that's being squared. Now, this will just give me then, this almost looks silly, but now I just get that this whole thing equals zero and I can go ahead and use the square root property here. So if I use the square root property, this will now give me x minus three equals, well, plus or minus zero is kind of ridiculous in this case, right? What is plus zero? It's zero. What is minus zero? It's zero. So in this case, this is like a special case. You can drop the plus or minus. And so then that actually gets rid of the two cases, right? So that's telling you then that you only have one x-intercept. And that x-intercept is specifically at x equals three. So here's my lone x-intercept. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna graph this just to see if this makes sense. So what I get from looking at this graph is that this is going to be just a parabola, but I have to shift it uh, three to the, to the right. So I shift it over here. And then I'm gonna go out one and down two in each direction. Now, like I said, this is a little bit of an example video. So in my example videos, I, I kind of assume you, you get the, the gist of this. So if you need more details on how to graph, I do have a longer video on kind of how that breaks down and, and you can definitely check that out. But here's my point, right? So as far as now the x-intercepts, I have just one here. That makes sense because I only found one. So all of this works out and, and, and jives, right? Okay, so now let's go to the next one. Same thing, starting with the vertex. The vertex in this case is two, one. My axis of symmetry is x equals two. Don't forget that x. And then to find my y-intercept, so I plug in the zero. Again, maybe you wanna pause the video here just to kind of figure that out on your own. And so let's see, I get negative two squared plus one. So this is four plus one. So this is five. So just to be nice and explicit, my y-intercept is zero, five. Okay, so now let's move on to the x-intercepts. Once again, we're gonna have another plot twist here. So I go ahead and I set the whole thing equal to zero as I'm supposed to do. And then I subtract one to isolate my squared part. And here's where everything gets kind of crazy or, or <laughs> not, not really that crazy, you know, I mean, it is math, but you get my drift. Okay, so I, I take my square root. Now here's the thing, because 
like so it, it depends the context of whether or not you can evaluate this square root is totally dependent on the type of problem that you're working on now when we're talking about x-intercepts we're talking about graphing and you can't graph imaginary numbers so this this does not exist on a graph so the square root of a negative number will give you an imaginary number imaginary numbers can't be graphed so what that means then there are no x intercepts now you might think that doesn't make any sense or like i you know would that reflect that way on the graph so part of what you want to do then is you want to now graph it just to see does that actually make sense so try not to get too hung up on oh it's telling me no x intercepts i must have done something wrong or whatever so like sometimes people like kind of I think default to thinking they did something wrong when the math is actually telling them no no you've totally got it right so there's my vertex and I go out one and up one in each direction and so check it out there's my graph again it's not perfectly drawn to scale but just confirming kind of what we found with our x-intercepts there are no x-intercepts right this is not going to cross the x-axis it's it's like too high up right so this makes sense and so that's kind of like the way that you can think about this and if you're if you're second guessing yourself draw the graph just to see if like logically it pans out with what you're finding okay so i have this last one here which this might be a great one just to pause and and check your reasoning so maybe you want to pause and, and answer these three questions and then hit play when you're ready so in this case this is negative three negative one for my vertex x equals negative three for my axis of symmetry and then if I evaluate my f of zero, so if I work through all this, let's see, be really careful with this negative here. So this gives me actually negative nine minus one, so this equals negative 10. So this is zero negative 10 is my, um, my actual y-intercept. Okay, so now let's go to the x-intercepts. So again, maybe you wanna pause the video here just to see if you can figure this out, hit play when you're ready. So. Once again, I'm gonna set this guy equal to zero. And so I need to go ahead and isolate the squared part. And so now I've got uh, this equals one. Now remember, you're trying to isolate this squared part. So you have to actually divide by negative one because you just need this to be like a totally, you, you can't have this negative in front of here, okay? So when you do this, you get x plus 3 squared equals negative 1. And so then when I take the square root of each side, so once again, this means there are no x-intercepts. Great. So now I want to I wanna just graph that to see if that actually makes sense. So let's see. I've got negative 3, negative 1, and then I go out 1 and down 1 in each direction. And so look at that, that totally makes sense, right? That this came up with no x-intercepts because we can see on the graph, right? It doesn't cross any x-intercepts. And so that'll wrap it up for this set of examples. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, and feel free to reach out or leave a comment or something like that if you have any questions. See you next time.